G'day reefers, I'm Kevin the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV is a very important episode in the fight against marine protozoa such as white spot and velvet. We're going to show you how to beat these nasty parasites in a reef aquarium without any chemicals or without taking any of the fish out of the tank. This tank has been established for a few years now and for the time that we've been looking after it there's been zero problems with fish disease such as marine white spot or velvet. However, recently an angelfish was added into this tank it's a regal angel and it was a bit of a, a poor choice for the tank because there's already a fairly aggressive uh, French angel and the tangs are a little bit difficult to add new fish in with. But the problem with this fish, this regal angel, was that it actually was infested with white spot and when it was introduced into the tank it triggered a, an outbreak of white spot throughout this system. Today we're going to show you the steps that we're going to take to fully eradicate the white spot out of this tank. So this is it. This is our secret weapon in the fight against white spot in this system. It's a massive UV sterilizer and it's going to fully eradicate the white spot out of this tank. So what we have here is a 150 watt Emperor UV sterilizer. Now marine protozoa such as white spot and velvet have got a period of their life cycle where they're actually free swimming around the tank. And the idea of this system is that water is pumped through the UV sterilizer and inside the unit is a tube, a 150 watt tube which emits UVC which kills the marine protozoa in this stage of the life cycle as it's passed through the unit. Now, the critical part about a UV sterilizer in battling marine protozoa is that you need to have a very high exposure of UVC to effectively kill marine protozoa. And that's why we're using such a large unit. In terms of a system for control and prevention, we could go for a unit a third this size. But when we have an active outbreak, it's very important that we have two things. First of all, a high exposure rating, so we know that every marine protozoa that goes through the unit will be killed. But secondly, we need to have a high enough turnover between the tank and the unit that will effectively eradicate the parasite faster than it's able to replicate on the fish. Now, there's a variety of factors that you have to consider the susceptibility of the fish, and here we have tangs, so quite susceptible, uh, as well as the density of the fish. And if you have a tank with a lot of fish, and they're all susceptible, like the tangs and angels in here, then you may need even more UV than what we're using today. However, we've used this lone unit on a number of tanks, and we've always had great success. In fact, I've used this unit on tanks up to three times this size, the, the main thing I find when it's in a bigger tank with more fish though is that uh, it takes longer to eradicate the white spot. With this tank what we're probably going to do is run this unit for two weeks and we'll probably find that the white spot has gone from the system. However, we will then use a smaller unit that will plumb into the tank and that will be an ongoing system for control so we don't have further outbreaks of white spot. Now, these UV sterilizers are typically plumbed into the filtration of large systems. So I've modified this unit so that we can run it as a temporary fixture on a tank. This is going to sit in front of the tank as it is right now, and each of the outlets I've adapted to soft hose so that it's very easy to just put the unit on, run it for a period of time, and then take it off when the problem is gone.
customise it for this tank. tank we used this on was really deep so we needed to go right down to the bottom of the tank. This one's half the depth. And we're using an Octo AQ3000 so it's about 3000 litres per hour. So it's good to have a little bit of slack with the hosing. We still need to get into these cupboards. So having as much slack will mean that we can move the unit to access the filtration. It's also especially important with this sort of setup that every single point is sealed and well and truly secured in place so that nothing can pop off. The worst thing would be if one of these hoses popped off, it would potentially drain the tank out. Right, so we're almost ready to plug it in, I think. Just check this one. How do we secure this? I think what I'm gonna do is zip tie the outlet of this unit onto the bridge of the tank. So, none of this is pretty, but it's very effective. No way this can go anywhere. I'm just going to double check these hose clamps. We have used this unit recently, but just need to be sure. Let's turn the pump on and see if there's any leaks. Alright, here we go. start the pump. Okay, so the impeller had a little bit of grit inside it, so it didn't start. I've cleaned the grit out and now it should be an easy start. Here we go. Three, two, one. Perfect. That's what we wanted to see. So water is feeding into the unit and all the air is being pushed out. I've actually turned the pump off again. Um, so this is just water gravity feeding into the, the unit. Alright, pump back on. So, everything is going to plan. We have our 
uh, 3,000 litre an hour pump, which has been turned down probably to around about 2,000 litres an hour. And there's no leaks between the pump, the UV steriliser, and where we've secured the return going back into the tank. So all we have now left to do is to turn on the UV steriliser. So we have this ballast here and the power cord. I'm just going to plug this in here. You see that the pump is still flushing a little bit of air through the unit. Okay. It's important you don't turn these the actual UV on until it's completely full of water and there's no uh, air left in it. So that's turned on. Now I'm going to check it. The ends of these units are transparent and so you can see down into the, the guts of the unit and I can tell very clearly that the light is working. So now we've got everything set up exactly as it should be. I'm just going to do some more checks to make sure that there's definitely no leaks. So let's just talk about exposure ratings of marine protozoa when it comes to UV sterilization. I think there's a lot of uh, misconceptions about UV sterilizers in general and a lot of the time uh, I find that people who run UV sterilizers have got systems that don't actually give you an exposure rating. If you can't get an exposure rating with a UV sterilizer, there's really no way to judge if it's going to be in any way effective at control of marine protozoa. The exposure rating required for these marine parasites, these marine protozoa, is much, much higher than the exposure rating that you require to kill things such as waterborne algae. Now, from the research that I've done, the exposure rating that I will quote when I'm talking about marine white spot is 280,000 milliwatts per cubic centimeter of water. Now, the flow of water through the UV steriliser dictates the amount of exposure rating that the UV is able to put out. And so, when we calculate the exposure ratings, the flow is a critical factor. And so, the exposure rating that I use for marine white spot is 280,000. So that's a very, very high exposure rating. The exposure rating that I base uh, my treatment with UV sterilizers on for marine velvet is 110,000. So it's much easier to use this system to control marine velvet. And so if it was a marine velvet outbreak, potentially I could put a higher flow through this UV steriliser or we could use a smaller unit. So this tank is, I would say, a medium infestation of marine white spot. It hasn't broken out onto all of the fish, just the fish that are susceptible, the angels and the tangs. And I would say that were it not for the intervention and the addition of this UV steriliser, that we would start to see losses in probably a week or two's time. So we'll come back and have a look at this tank and see how our system for chemical free white spot control has worked. We'll put a second UV steriliser on the system for ongoing control. And because the problem is that without removing the fish, without um, giving the tank a period without any fish in it, there's, it's very difficult to completely eradicate and so control from this point onward is really the, the best system. So that's how we treat uh, white spot in aquarium, reef aquariums that you can't remove the fish. It would be really interesting to show you the results. Uh, we use this system a lot. It's a very, very effective way to control marine white spot. So that's our episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Um, feel free to, to put your thoughts about marine white spot and velvet in the comments. It does tend to be a very contentious issue. And uh, were it not for the fact that we've uh, fixed so many problems of white spot using this sort of method, uh, I'd be reluctant to even show this on a video on Gallery Aquatica TV. However, that's our video for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kevin the Fish Guy, and happy reefing. That's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you've subscribed to our channel so you don't miss an episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing!